Welcome back to Noob Talk. My name's Lee Ban, and this week we're looking at the Dragon Ball franchise and the upcoming Xenoverse 2. What would the ultimate Dragon Ball game actually look like? So to help me this time, I have my brother here, Kamal. What's up, guys? Kamal and both of us have been playing the Dragon Ball games quite a lot over the years. And if you've been under a rock for most of your life, the Dragon Ball franchise is a global phenomenon, instantly go gaining success in its homeland of Japan, and then further dominating internationally with its manga and anime series. Along with this, there have also been a series of video games released across a multitude of platforms. And while some have been decent, most have never been able to really capture that same feeling we got when the great ape first appeared or when we witnessed Goku's first ascension to the Super Saiyan form. I haven't personally played every title there is, because you know, there are just there are just way too many of them. But when you think Dragon Ball, it's basically super fast fighting with a ton of destruction taking place in a really wide open space. And the games would show this to an extent, but you would always get the sense of feeling that something was missing or off. Would you agree with that? Yes, I, I would agree with that 100%. I mean, the first games I started with was Ultimate Battle 22. And we're going way back with that. That was back on the PlayStation 1. Yeah, I think my one was Raging Blast 2 on the PlayStation 3. Now, Ultimate Battle 22 was a horrible game. When I think about it now, it was a really ugly looking game. 2D sprites, 3D backgrounds, the animations were really wonky. It just looked completely ugly. I know you only really played the Dragon Ball games once it came to 3D, right? Yeah. Yeah, I definitely did. And so I remember the first Dragon Ball game that actually did things properly was probably from the Budokai series. So Budokai 1. Yeah, when they started uh, bringing in combos, which started making it more realistic towards the anime when they brought in different combos and techniques to beat your opponents. But back then, it was mostly played on a 2D format. So you'd still get 3D characters, but it would still be 2D. So Budokai did that up till 3. I know Burst Limit I was pretty fond of. That still did a 2D kind of format. But it's not really till Tenkaichi... And Raging Blast that they start bringing in 3D where you would look at the, at the, back, of your, at the back of your character in like a third person form where you'd be fighting and then the the camera angle would change depending on what your character does also um uh this this form would just change your experience in the Dragon Ball Z universe and also them the, them bringing in more realistic um designs and graphics made it much better and much enjoyable games. The fact that it went to an open 3D arena was interesting. I mean, you could fly around, send your opponent flying through three buildings. And, yeah. you know, if you were skilled enough, which was, you know, if, if you were skilled enough, which was really cool at the time. And, but at the same time, it feels like the general pace of the game slows down as well, unless you were locked into a furious battle. Maybe the fact that you had so much open space probably caused a problem as well. Because you could just stand back and throw a hundred beams, but that's not what it's about, really, is it? Yeah, maybe if they were like, if they were to uh, minimize the the size of the maps and maybe introduce new combos, because we would know that, say, like every few months they would bring in new combos to use. Because I remember that it would get really repetitive. You'd use the same combos over and over again, and you'll find that a bit boring. And then also, um, yeah, uh, they should uh, increase your chances of using like. Um, Goku's uh, Kamehameha and things like that instead of backing up you'd have to fight so that's why I think they should bring in smaller maps I think it's just a case of finding that right balance you know in a perfect world we'd like to fly all over the whole planet and fight but that's just not gonna work out so that's why I personally think that the 2.5D or 2D games did it better because they had the combos battles were straight and upfront. you had no choice but to fight quickly and furiously compared to the 3d where it's just too open it's not really it, it's showing what dragon ball z is about but it's not dragon ball z dragon ball at the same time if that makes sense yeah i think i would agree with that i think i would agree with that yeah so considering all of that yep. what actually makes dragon ball good what are you hoping that they'll bring with xenoverse 2 in october um, in my opinion, I think they should bring in every single character that's ever graced Dragon Ball Z. So starting from the original Dragon Ball, where Goku arrives on Earth, all the way to Dragon Ball Super, which introduced obviously the God of Destruction, um, his his master. We got Black Goku, and then we have G Dragon Ball GT. We have Super Saiyan Four. All of those characters, I think they should all be introduced. But obviously, the latest ones. Obviously, as it would be really hard to fit in so many different forms of Goku and Vegeta and Trunks, what they should do that their storyline should 
should help you to get all the characters, like what they did in Raging Blast uh, 1 and 2. You would have to play the story to unlock every single character, which made it much fun and much a longer experience for the for the player, and which made it much more enjoyable for the player. Also, what they should do is not try and consider making a Goku and then a Goku Super Saiyan and then a Goku Super Saiyan 3 and then it takes up three slots on their character select screen when it's just the same character but a different form. Yeah, what they should introduce is on the character, if it has different forms, for example, Goku and uh, Frieza, um, obviously, depending on what console, the arrow buttons on the PS4 controller should suggest... So say if it says click arrow to the right, would change its form to either Super Saiyan, Super Saiyan 2, 3... And then obviously the GT versions. And if it's Frieza, obviously we have perfect Frieza. We have um, we have all the other two forms, so you should be able to pick it. So that means it won't take up so many slots. Or just make it part of the gameplay like they used to, where you'd actually have to power up to reach the other forms. Because that just made it actually, it made sense. That's what they do in the actual cartoon. They power up and then they transform. So just make it part of the actual game the way it is. It just makes sense that way. But then obviously Xenoverse is having a lot of changes done to it as well. Um, I can't really say I played the game, but I know you did. Yeah, I, I did. And I didn't really find it that fun, to be honest, because um, I think it would have been better if it had a storyline with all the original characters. Maybe like maybe it just differs to your uh, to your play style, but um, in my opinion, I think we should have just had an original storyline and maybe had like a backup, like a second storyline that's smaller that you can have your own character, which you obviously did in Xenoverse. But I didn't really enjoy the fact that you had to make your own character when I could have just wanted to play with someone like Goku or Vegeta. I think that's more debatable. Some, I mean, the whole character creation thing, people have been asking for that for a. Uh... For a really long time, actually. They've been asking for that for a while. But yeah, there's... I mean, they've done the story like a hundred times over, but they can always do it better. Um, it's not necessarily always done that well. And considering that, you know, with Super happening at the moment, there's a lot more story to come now, especially with the uh, Goku Black or Evil Goku, whoever he is. So if we look at it, essentially what we want is fighting to be fast and furious. You'll easily be able to change it to different forms. Yep. And more characters introduced. More characters and a more detailed storyline because they could do so much with it. Yeah, especially with the introduction of uh, Black Goku. They can make an entire new storyline just with him, to be honest. Exactly. All right. So that was Noob Talk for this week. What do you think should go in the ultimate Dragon Ball Z game? What does your ideal Dragon Ball game look like? Are you looking forward to Xenoverse 2? Let me know in the comments just down below. Noob Talk is happening every Monday and you keep and you can keep up with all my updates over on the social media with Twitter at the Liban Ali. And if you want to follow me on Instagram, it'll be at the underscore Liban. Thanks to Kamal for joining me on this episode to talk about Dragon Ball. I, very, I enjoyed the Dragon Ball game, but I, in my opinion, they have loads of improvements to do with Xenoverse 2. Exactly. And so until the next episode, we will catch you later. See ya.